finally, finally, here is another Drift Build video for you guys. And sorry I haven't done one Drift Build video in a while, it's just been very lazy. And I was supposed to upload a Drift Build video last week, but then the new car pack came out. And I decided I'll just post it next week to make up for not uploading a Drift Build in like three weeks. And that Drift Build video was supposed to be on the Nissan Skyline R32. And also another thing I'm thinking of sort of moving forward, making more of those Forza Horizon 2 commentaries, and because Forza Motorsport 6 is coming out, I know that maybe my Forza Horizon 2 commentaries aren't as popular as my drip builds, but thinking of just making drip build every second week, Forza Horizon 2 drip build every second week, from now, that'll be from now until when Forza 6 comes out, and when Forza 6 comes out, I'll still be making a Forza Horizon 2 drip build every second week, and every other week, falls a 6 drift build. But anyway, here we are, finally with the drift build. And to make up for not uploading a drift build in a while, I will upload the Nissan Skyline R32 next week. So that reminds me, I forgot to introduce myself. So yeah, hello guys, and use the Rhino here. And here is a drift build for you guys in the one and only 2015 Volvo S60 Polestar. Now this is just a beautiful car, absolutely wonderful, and I just really like the colour in blue and I like the fact how it's all wheel drive, I guarantee that if it were rear wheel drive, it wouldn't handle too good, I don't know, but it would still be good if it were rear wheel drive, but all wheel drive I guess makes sense for a Volvo because they had all wheel drive in the old wagons, I didn't, don't really like the old Volvo wagons, but I love the new ones, the new ones are just sick as. But unfortunately, this is not the wagon version, it is the sedan version, which is good, I guess. And it's the first Volvo to be added since Forza 4. So, not really much of a speed, 7.1, that's alright. Decent launch, nice braking. We got actually a pretty good launch, 8.6. And we got really good, pretty decent acceleration, 7.4. And alright handling, 6.5. 6% less than the speed, but that's okay if it's all-wheel drive, I guess. So we got 345 horsepower, so that's pretty good too. For That's really good for a Volvo. Um, yeah, not as much as the Tesla. That's an electric car, though, but that's okay. The wagon version is slightly more power, but yeah. We've got 349 pound foot of torque, so like with a lot of cars, nearly the same amount of torque as power. It's barely heavy car. It's slightly light, heavier than the Tesla. 3,684 pounds. Yeah, and so let's just hop into it. And we'll take a look at it. The exterior and interior, just like we do with the car comparison. But first, we got to give it the builds, of course. So, give it an engine swap? Yeah, why not? This is a drift build week can do anything we want. Aspiration? Mm. Yeah, twin turbo. And we're just going to keep it in all-wheel drive because I like doing all-wheel drive cars because they just, like, handle better. Like, well, I wouldn't say handle better, but just spin out less. But when you do spin out, it's not very good. Are we add a wing? No, we won't worry about the wing. Oh, it looks beautiful. Uh, yeah, we'll add those sort of tyres. Fully upgrade the tyre width, of course, when you're doing a drip build. What you should do. Alright. I'm giving a transmission. We never worry about the clutch because we don't do manual with clutch. So we'll do the sport one because... Oh, well, no, we'll do the race one. I was going to do the sport one because there's better launch and acceleration because for some reason when you do the race transmission it downgrades the launch and acceleration and yeah so I just want to talk to you about these drip builds so every second week I'll upload a drip build video yeah but I'll still because I want to make more of those Forza Horizon 2 commentaries and I want to squeeze in one more series I want to squeeze in one more series before Forza 6 comes out, after, apart from the car comparison series. And 
I've already recorded the video for the first part of that series, which is coming next week. About next week, or between, I'd say, five to seven days. Yeah, five to eight days. And I reckon you'll enjoy it. It's a surprise. But, yeah. So from now to when I stop making Forza Horizon 2 videos, I will... No, so from now to Forza, from when Forza 6 comes out, I'll make the Forza Horizon 2 commentaries more often. But for the rest of the time, I'll make Forza videos. But with the drift builds, I'll only upload them every second week, including when Forza 6 comes out. Because when Forza 6 comes out, those will be the only Forza Horizon 2 videos I upload every second week. A drift build video. And I'm also planning on making project car videos, but after what happened to my Xbox, I just need to reinstall it, which is this. I could say a pain in the bum. Yeah. I'm sorry. But, yeah, we'll just, like I say, with... Oh, we got a speed at 9.9. Can we make it 10? Yes, we can. We made the speed at max. So it should, because it's a part... So it should go like a Bugatti Veyron. It's all-wheel drive, just like it. And it goes just as fast as it. Except, of course, it's lighter and smaller and definitely not as monstrous because we gave it from a V6 to a V8 this has a uh, now we gave this a V8 v we gave this from a V6 to a V8 but the Bugatti Varion has W16 so we'll just take a look at it and quickly change the settings alright so that was a bit glitchy so starting at the back we got that Volvo badge in capital letters uh, we got the, no, sort of nice shaped tail lights, I'd say. Yeah, they're, I'd say they're alright. Uh, pretty invisible exhaust pipes down there. And we also got the X60 and Square Aqua Polestar badge, which makes it look quite sporty. But anyway, the side, we got a unique sedan side, like on a Ford or Jag. And we got nice rims, brake alfina, and the front... If it weren't for that Volvo logo, you'd probably get confused with this as a Jaguar XFRS, probably. Because it's four-door and it has a similar front. Yeah, and we got the nice Volvo badge with that, with the line going up. And at the first, the line going up the entire AA, yeah, I first I wasn't so sure about that, but I guess it looks good. It can be an acquired look. And we got gorgeous shaped headlights and... Another grill down there, and indicators underneath the actual headlights itself. And the top, well the top you get nothing, no sunroof, except for that little thing there, whatever that is. I don't know, like a tail, like on a plane. So the interior, we've got that nice red, red dial in the middle, I really like that. And the steering wheel, just normal, regular steering wheel, the buttons on the side, and the rest of the interior is just normal, but I just, the only unique part, yeah, the only unique part of the interior I like is the red dashboard, I reckon it looks really cool, and it would really suit it on, it would be, I'd say both really cool and really weird if that were on the wagon version, which it is, if the, the if it was on the wagon version, yeah, no, I just lost train thought, but, it sounds really cool and really weird if that were on the wagon version, which it is, and you got to drive it in this game. Because I, gonna be honest, I wasn't, I'm not a huge fan of the old Volvos. But the new ones are cool. Okay, so. Yeah, so with that all wheel drive, it's maybe a, a bit easier to do a drift without spinning out. But. It's harder to sort of sustain the drift. It's harder to sort of sustain the drift. It's harder to, slightly harder to do the drift itself, sustain the drift, and do the drift without crashing. But with real drive, it's harder to do the drift without spinning out. Oh. Damn. So, yeah, I'm not. Gonna no way. You have 
and you guys know that, and I know that too. Okay. And like I said, not only am I not the best drifter, I'm also not the best YouTuber, I'm not the biggest one either. Um, yeah, pretty successful. I did not know we were gonna make that also. Sound of that V8. That's the only problem with engine swaps in this game. When you swap them to say to to sort of engine like they just sound all sound exactly the same. If you this V8 sounds just like you'd be able to give put this V8 engine in a lot of other cars. That's the only problem. Probably the only car in this game with a unique sound that where it's the only car with that sort of engine, with that sort of sounds, the Bugatti Veyron with that turbocharged, monstrous turbocharged W16. I just love that engine, but the only problem is, it's just humongous. Two V8s stuck together. V8 is heavy enough, but two V8s, oh, just couldn't imagine it. It's, oh, it's as big as the, it's, Pretty sure it's bigger than the engine on a Viper, and the Viper is a huge engine, humongous engine. Either it's slightly, the one that the Gay Barrel is slightly bigger, or it's about the same size. I don't know. You can correct me here, even you, Trist GD. So we, I don't know why we hopped the interior. I can't stop looking. I like looking at the interior of some cars. Looking at that red dial. I don't know. Alright, so we just drift a little bit more into Cistron and we're going to do a showdown just like we did in the GT2 RS. But in the R32 we didn't do a long drift build, as I say. Some will be longer drift builds with the showdown, some will just be normal with um, the build and the drifting around the streets. In the R32 we didn't do a showdown, but it's not a very special car. Well, it is. It is a special car. Well, I wouldn't say special, special, but it's a nice car. It's a nice, Jap one of the best Japanese sports cars ever, the Skyline. But I just said, uh, like, special car, or like, maybe DLC, special car, or one that's more rare. Maybe one that's more rare, one that's newer, one that's newer in, in both the game and in the car. Like this is 2015, the GT2 RS is 2012, and the R32 is 1993. But it doesn't matter the year, it just don't seem to feel fit, it doesn't seem to fit into a longer, one of those longer drip reviews of the show. I don't know. So just heading to the airport, we're going to do drifts on the drag. We're not going to do a drag race because that would be suitable if this was a speed build. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. sorry, I was just fixing up my mic. That would be better for a drift build. Um, that would be more better for a speed build. But this is pretty fast. Oh, God. Sorry. Okay. So we're nearly there. Just mostly straight road. We can just put the pedal to the metal while we're there, while we're going there. Because, of course, you can't drift on a straight skinny road like this. We can drift on a straight road, but this isn't just one. Like, the only straight road you can drift on is the airport drag. Yeah. And I'm not really good at drifting it. I'm, I'll be honest, bad at drifting at those corners, the turns. Like the turns when you enter a new street. Oh, okay, that was good. Really good. I used to always do this, so. I used to always do this. Like, I started doing this when I had half of my perks unlocked, and I was doing this until I had all my perks unlocked, and until I had a couple of wheel spins. I used to always do this to, as a trick to getting some wheel spins and I've unlocked and some perks, but I've unlocked all the perks. But when I started doing this, half of my perks were unlocked and were unlocked and they became all unlocked in about 
an hour, an hour and a half. And we just finally spun it there. And hit the speed trap. And that speed trap is the finish line for the drag race if you were doing the drag race. So we'll just do one more lap down here and then we'll start, we'll enter a car meet and do the showdown. And if you haven't been really giving me some feedback, because I know my channel's not big and people don't really bother commenting, but please, please, if you're watching this, maybe show some feedback, because I need to know what you think of these drift boots. Like, you can be honest, but please don't be vain, no cussing. Like, like say if they, if they suck, say if, they're, say if they're good, they're okay, need a bit more work, or if they suck. But do not say in a vain way. I will not appreciate. So I guess we'll be going to the showdown. Just wait for these points to finish. And then we'll go to the showdown. It's still going. 32,440 points. Okay, I'll see you at the showdown. Okay, so here we are in the car meet lined up for the showdown. And only one other person has joined. Just like last time. Only me against some other person. In the last one, it was against an A-Class Ferrari 575M, and they got like a 15 second head start. So we'll just see what which type of car we're up against here. Hopefully it's about the same class. Hmm. Yes, and we're against the same class, so we're starting at the same time. We're against the... Corvette and the same class, both S2 except mine should be slightly faster because I don't think you're up the Corvette to max speed. So far in the lead, but I'm gonna be honest, on the last one I did horrible because I wasn't really fully concentrating on winning the race because when the showdown and we'll do some drifting. When I decide to do some drifting in the race, I don't really fully concentrate on winning. Like, for this, I'm probably, if I if this weren't a drift build, I'd be concentrating 100% on winning. But, because this is a drift build, I'm concentrating 50% on winning, 50% of trying to drift in the race. Without stuffing it up. Like, we nearly did that, but luckily the all-wheel drive and the corner sort of saved it. So yeah, so far this guy's flying us. And... My car has more power, has slightly more power, and I'm not sure, but because that the Corvette already has quite a fair amount of power in its stock, because it's an American muscle car. It's an American, it's an American modern muscle car, and when you upgrade, when you upgrade, it would have a bit more power after already having a fair amount of power. But this is a Swedish car, and it had a fair amount of power before upgrade, so I'm not sure. Probably about the same amount of power, but this has a bit more of a top speed. Yeah, obviously, because I know the Corvette. I don't fully remember if that's the Corvette Stingray, the original Corvette Stingray C7, or the Corvette Z06. Ugh. They're not too much different, but the Z06 is like 100 horsepower. It's 100. I mean. About, yeah, 150 horsepower, more powerful than the, Corvette, the, the 24 in Corvette Stingray C7 in its stock, and that is a lot of horsepower. So that's why, before that, and yes, we're going to lose, and that's why, before that car pack came out with the Corvette Z06, I had the. No, I, no, I'm not copying James Bond. That's why that, before the car pack came out with the Corvette Z06, I had the original Corvette Stingray C7, but then when I got the Z06, I probably got rid of it because it was like basically a more modified and more powerful version of it, and I didn't really need it. Yeah, and my friend Tris Dewey did upload a video like, is the Corvette Stingray worth it over the Corvette Z06, and I enjoyed that, and he thinks the Z06 is worth it. And that and the Z06 being a more powerful modified version of the original Stingray C7 is why I sold it. Or removed it because you don't get your money back unlike Forza Horizon 1. So anyway, that pretty much wraps up the video. I didn't do a very good job. 
we'll just exit the car meet, then wrap it up. So please, please, if you're watching this video, just leave one short comment. Just what do you think? Good, good, bad, average. But please don't say it's bad in vain, okay? And maybe even leave a like or subscribe. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next drift build. Bye bye. Finally, finally, here is another drift build video for you guys. And sorry, I haven't done one drift build video in a while. It's just been very lazy and. I was supposed to upload a drift build video last week, but then the new car pack came out, and I decided I'll just post it next week to make up for not playing a drift build in like three weeks. And that drift build video was supposed to be on the Nissan Skyline R32. And also another thing, I'm thinking of sort of moving forward, making more of those Forza Horizon 2 commentaries, and because Forza Motorsport 6 is coming out, I know that maybe my Forza. Horizon 2 commentaries aren't as popular as my drift builds, but thinking just making drift build every second week. Forza Horizon 2 drift build every second week. From now, that'll be from now until when Forza 6 comes out. And when Forza 6 comes out, I'll still be making a Forza Horizon 2 drift build every second week. And every other week, Forza 6 drift build. But anyway, here we are finally with the drift build. And to make up for not uploading a drift build in a while, I will upload the Nissan Skyline R32 next week. So that reminds me, I forgot to introduce myself. So yeah, hello guys, Induced Rhino here. And here is a drift build for you guys in the one and only 2015 Volvo S60 Polestar. Now this is just a beautiful car, absolutely wonderful. And I just really like the color in blue and I like the fact how it's all wheel drive. I guarantee that if it were rear wheel drive, wouldn't handle too good. I don't know, but it would still be good if it were rear wheel drive, but all wheel drive, I guess, makes sense for a Volvo because they had all wheel drive in the old wagons. I didn't, don't really like the old Volvo wagons, but I love the new ones. The new ones are just sick as. But unfortunately, this is not the wagon version, it is the sedan version, which is good, I guess. And it's the first Volvo to be added since Forza 4. So, not really much of a speed, 7.1, that's alright. Decent launch, nice braking. We got a, actually a pretty good launch, 8.6. And we got really good, pretty decent acceleration, 7.4. And alright handling, 6.5. 6% less than the speed, but that's okay if it's all-wheel drive, I guess. So we got 345 horsepower, so that's pretty good too. Or that's really good for a Volvo. Um, yeah, not as much as the Tesla. That's an electric car, though, but that's okay. The wagon version is slightly more power. But, yeah, we've got 349 pound foot of torque. So, like with a lot of cars, nearly the same amount of torque as power. It's barely heavy car. It's slightly light, heavier than the Tesla. 3,684 pounds, yeah, and so let's just hop into it, and we'll take a look at it, the exterior and interior, just like we do with the car comparison, but first, we gotta give it the builds, of course, so, give it an engine swap, yeah, why not, this is a drift build, we can do anything we want, aspiration, mm. yeah, twin turbo, and we're just going to keep it in all-wheel drive because I like doing all-wheel drive cars because they just, like, handle better. Like, well, I wouldn't say handle better, but just spin out less. But when you do spin out, it's not very good. We add a wing. No, we won't worry about the wing. Oh, it looks beautiful. Uh, yeah, we'll add those sort of tyres. Fully upgrade the tire width, of course, when you're doing a drift build, what you should do. Alright. We'll give it a transmission. We never worry about the clutch because we don't do manual with clutch. So we'll do the sport one because. Oh, well, no, we'll do the race one. I was going to do the sport one because it has 
better launch and acceleration because for some reason when you do the race transmission it downgrades the launch and acceleration and yeah so I just want to talk to you about these drift builds so every second week I'll upload a drift build video yeah but I'll still because I want to make more of those Forza Horizon 2 commentaries and I want to squeeze in one more series I want to squeeze in one more series before Forza 6 comes out after apart from the car comparison series and I've already recorded the video for the first part of that series which is coming next week about next week or between I'd say five to seven days yeah five to eight days and I reckon you'll enjoy it it's a surprise but yeah so from now to when I stop making Forza Horizon 2 videos, I will, no, so from now to Forza, from when Forza 6 comes out, I'll make the Forza Horizon 2 commentaries more often, but for the rest of the time I'll make Forza video, but with the drift builds I'll only upload them every second week, including when Forza 6 comes out, because when Forza 6 comes out, those will be the only Forza Horizon 2 videos I upload every second week. The drift build beer and I'm also planning on making project car videos but after what happened to my Xbox I just need to reinstall it which is this I could say a pain in the bum yeah I'm sorry but yeah we'll just like I say with oh we got a speed of 9.9 .9. can we make it 10 yes we can we are made the speed at max so it should, because it's a part, so it should go like a Bugatti Veyron. It's all-wheel drive, just like it, and it goes just as fast as it, except, of course, it's lighter and smaller, and definitely not as monstrous, because we gave it from a V6 to a V8. This has a, uh, available. now we gave this a V8. V we gave this from a V6 to a V8, but the Bugatti Veyron has W16. So we'll just take a look at it and quickly change the settings. Alright, so that was a bit glitchy. So starting at the back, we got that Volvo badge in capital letters. Uh, we got the no sort of nice shaped tail lights, I'd say. Yeah, they're, I'd say they're alright. Uh, pretty invisible exhaust pipes down there. And we also got the XC60 and Square Aqua Polestar badge, which makes it look quite sporty but anyway the side we got a unique sedan side like on a Ford or Jag and we've got nice rims brake alfina and the front if it weren't for that Volvo logo you'd probably get confused with this as a Jaguar XFRS probably because it's four door and it has a similar front yeah and we got the nice Volvo badge with that with the line going up and at the first the line going up the entire ray yeah I first I wasn't so sure about that but I guess it looks good it can be an acquired look and we've got gorgeous shaped headlights and another grill down there and indicators underneath the actual headlights itself and the top well the top you get nothing no sunroof except for that little thing there whatever that is I don't know, like a tail, like on a plane. So the interior, we got that nice red, red dial in the middle. I really like that. And the steering wheel, just normal, regular steering wheel. The buttons on the side, and the rest of the interior is just normal. But I just the only unique part. Yeah, the only unique part of the interior I like is the red dashboard. I reckon it looks really cool, and it would really suit it. Like. It would be. I'd say both really cool and really weird if that were on the wagon version, which it is. If the, the if it was on the wagon version, yeah. Oh, I just lost track of thought, but it sounds really cool and really weird if that were on the wagon version, which it is. And you got to drive it in this game. Cause I, gonna be honest, I wasn't. I'm not a huge fan of the old Volvos, but the new ones. Cool. Okay, so yeah, so with that all-wheel drive, it's maybe a, a 
bit easier to do a drift without spinning out, but it's harder to sort of sustain the drift. It's harder to sort of sustain the drift. It's harder to, slightly harder to do the drift itself, sustain the drift, and do the drift without crashing. But with real drive, it's harder to do the drift without spinning out. Oh. Damn it. So, yeah, I'm not going to stop. No way. You have arrived and you guys know that, and I know that too. But, and like I said, not only am I not the best drift I'm also not the best YouTuber, I'm not the biggest one either. Um, yeah, pretty successful. I did not know we were going to make that also. Sound of that V8. So that's the only problem with engine swaps in this game. When you swap them to, say, to, to a sort of engine like, they just sound all sound exactly the same. If you, this V8 sounds just like You'd be able to give put this V8 engine a lot of other cars. That's the only problem. Probably the only car in this game with a unique sound that where it's just unlocked and I was doing this until I had all my perks unlocked and until I had a couple of wheel spins. I used to always do this to as a trick to gain some wheel spins and I've unlocked some perks, but I've unlocked all the perks. But when I started doing this, half of my perks were unlocked and were unlocked and they became all unlocked in about an hour, an hour and a half. And we just finally spun it there. And hit the speed trap. And that speed trap is the finish line for the drag race if you were doing the drag race. So we'll just do one more lap down there and then we'll start with, we'll enter a car meet and do the showdown. And you haven't been really giving me some feedback because I know my channel's not bigger. People don't really bother commenting, but please, please, if you're watching this, maybe show some feedback because I need to know what you think of these drift routes. Like, you can be honest, but please don't be vain, no cussing. Like, like say if they if they suck, say if they're say if they're good, they're okay. Need a bit more work, or if they suck. But do not say in a vain way. I will not appreciate. So I guess we'll be going to the showdown. Just wait for these points to finish. And then we'll go to the showdown. It's still going. 32,440 points. Okay, I'll see you at the showdown. Okay, so here we are in the car meet, lined up for the showdown. And only one other person has joined, just like last time. Only me against some other person. In the last one, it was against an A-Class Ferrari 575M, and they got like a 15 second head start. So we'll just see what which type of car we're up against here. Hopefully it's about the same class. Hmm. Yes, and we're against the same class, so we're starting at the same time. We're against the... Corvette and the same class boat as two exactly. Mine should be slightly faster because I don't think we can up the Corvette to max speed. So far in the lead, but I'm gonna be honest, on the last one I did it horrible because I wasn't really fully concentrating on winning the race because when the showdown we need to do some drifting. When I decide to do some drifting in the race, I don't really fully concentrate on winning. Like, for this, I'm probably, if I this were a drift build, I'd be concentrating 100% on winning. But, because this is a drift build, I'm concentrating 50% on winning, 50% of trying to drift in the race. Without stuffing it up. Like, we nearly did that. But luckily, the all-wheel drive and the corner sort of saved it. So yeah, so far this guy's flying us. And... My car has more power, has slightly more power, and I'm not sure, but because that the Corvette already has quite a fair amount of power in its stock, because it's an American muscle car. It's an American, it's an American modern muscle car, and when you upgrade, when you upgrade, it would have a bit more power after already having a fair amount of power. But this is a Swedish car, and it had a fair amount of power. 
Flight Green, so I'm not sure. Probably about the same amount of power, but this has a bit more. The only car with that sort of engine, with that sort of sounds, the Bugatti Veyron with that turbocharged, monstrous turbocharged W16. I just love that engine, but the only problem is it's just humongous. Two V8s stuck together. V8 is heavy enough, but two V8s. Oh, just couldn't imagine it. It's well, it's as big as the. It's pretty sure it's bigger than the engine on a Viper, and the Viper is a huge engine, humongous engine. Either it's slightly the one that gave Barrow is slightly bigger, or it's about the same size. I don't know. You can correct me here. Even you, Tristudy. So we. I don't know why we have the interior. I can't stop looking. I like looking at the interior of some cars. Looking at that red dial. I don't know. All right, so we just drift a little bit more into Cistron, and we're going to do a showdown just like we did in the GT2 race. But in the R32, we didn't do a long drift build, as I say. Some will be longer drift builds with the showdown. Some will just be normal with um, the build and the drifting around the streets. And the R32 we didn't do a showdown. It's not very special. Well, it is. It is a special car. Well, I wouldn't say special, special. It's a nice car. It's a nice Jap one of the best Japanese sports cars ever, the Skyline. But I just uh, like a special car called like, maybe DLC special car or one that's more rare. Maybe one that's more rare, one that's newer, one that's newer in in both the game and in real life. Like this is 2015, the GT2 RS is 2012, and the R32 is 1993. But it doesn't matter of the year, I just don't seem to feel fit, it doesn't seem to fit into a longer, one of those longer drift reviews of the show. I don't know. So just heading to the airport, we're going to do this. Drifts on the drag. We're not going to do a drag race because that would be suitable if this was a speed build. Oh, uh -huh. uh, sorry, I was just fixing up my mic. That would be better for a drift build. Um, that would be more better for a speed build. But this is pretty fast. Oh, God. Sorry. Okay. So we're nearly there. We're just mostly straight road, we can just put the pedal to the metal while we're there, while we're going there. Because of course, you can't drift on a straight skinny road like this. We can drift on a straight road, but this isn't just one. Like the only straight road you can drift on is the airport drive. Yeah. And I'm not really good at drifting it. I'm, I'll be honest, bad at drifting at those corners, the turns. Like the turns when you enter a new street. Oh, okay, that was good. Really good. I used to always do this, so. I used to always do this, like I started doing this when I had half of my perk.